I want to share this particular passage, this particular chapter from the book Blue Truth with David Data. It really touched me in ways that most other books haven't. Let us know how these words have inspired you, have impacted you, have really have you evaluate your relationship to all your teachers, masters, mentors, coaches, consultants. Let us know how these words have impacted your relationship to your own students, your own audience, those people that depend on you for wisdom, insight, and knowledge. This is chapter 39 from the book Blue Truth. Openness is valuable. Others feel your masculine openness, a strong presence. Your intentions are clear. Your attention is tangible. People can trust you, feeling your unwavering integrity. They offer you their business, feeling your unperturbable virtue. They offer you their confidence. The trustable force of your presence is valuable to them. Feminine openness is felt as radiance. When your body and heart are open, life force flows through you unimpeded. Your eyes shine, your hips move like the ocean. Your voice sings with the force of nature. People are blessed just to see you, to imbibe your glorious fullness. Your brightness fills the room. Your smile awakens the heart of those around you. The gift of your radiance is priceless. At depth, your openness is the same as everyone's openness. Still, you can feel when closure occurs. You can feel when someone's being more uptight than you. They seem agitated, closed, dark, tense, and humorless. Naturally, you want to help such a person. But after a while, they can drain you. When you are with someone who is more closed than you are being, then your energy flows to him or her. When you are with someone who is more open than you are being, his or her energy flows to you. You feel inspired by their grace, all by their clarity. Eventually, the force of character may seem to influence you so much that you can become suspicious. If you aren't able to admit their superior openness, then you must find another justification for their influence on you. Suddenly, they may seem to be controlling you, belittling you, using you. You begin to hate them, even though you're also benefiting from their gifts. In any moment that someone is more open than you, they're more present or radiant than you. Compared to you, they're more clear, effective, insightful, sexy, mysterious, beautiful, or powerful. Even though this person also has their share of weaknesses, the force of their presence or radiance still pours from them to you. You can actually feel the energy, force, or power influencing you. You can receive this energy from your benefit. You can offer gratitude and appreciation to your superior friend. You can receive their gifts and perhaps grow into their peer, sharing the same depth of openness, passing on your own gifts of presence and radiance to those more closed than you. Or if you don't like to feel yourself as inferior, then you will end up denying your superior friend's energy through resistance, asserting your independence and equality while secretly envious for their brilliance and glory. You may feel afraid to speak up in their presence. You may feel jealous of their awesome beauty, desiring to be like them even while you take solace in pronouncing their flaws. You may find yourself exaggerating their weaknesses so that you can feel less inferior, even though you know that your presence is weaker or your radiance is more faint than theirs. Knowing your inferiority, feeling your dim bulb almost invisible in the shine of their sun can be very offensive to your need for self-worth. At depth, all people are equal. All people are equally divine. A life as conscious light. For most people, however, consciousness becomes degraded as their attention remains trapped in the drama of their everyday struggle with money, relationship, and health. 
the presence becomes absorbed in life's toil. Thus, a really present person, a person whose consciousness fills the room with tangible force, is rather rare. The shine of most people's heart, the natural light of their beings, gets obscured by the bodily sensation and the stress of their lives. The fresh radiance of a young lover eventually gets clouded and dimmed by years of betrayal, loss, and fear. By middle age, your shining heart may be encased in so many layers of mistrust and protection that your face seems shrouded in gauze of darkness. It is rare to meet an adult whose natural radiance still brightens a room with energy and love. Although all people at heart are equal as conscious light, each person expresses a different degree of presence and radiance, depending on how open they are in the moment. Sometimes, after years of suffering, a person can develop habits of closure that are not so easily to release. Their closure serves as a kind of protection against further hurt, and also obscure their would-be gifts of consciousness and light. If your true gifts have become lost in the struggle with life's demands, then you are in pain. Ungiven gifts hurt. Unoffered love sears the heart. Unexpressed insights suck the strength from your bones. When you meet a person of greater openness, your closure stands in stark relief. Feeling the choices you have made of security and self-guardedness, accurately aware of your yearning heart, lost time, and ungiven gifts, you can either surrender open and receive the force of superior openness, or fortify your closure. When you meet a superior man or woman, your only real choice are to fully open and receive their gifts or crucify them, and to be relieved of their force. To grow, you must learn to absorb their intensity of openness that would otherwise simply make you feel how cramped you are. Just as water always flows downhill, so do presence and radiance. In the company of a really open man or woman, the force will naturally impinge on you, exposing your fearfully limited stance in life, threatening your self-worth, offering the power necessary to awaken your heart into fullness. But you must be willing to feel your heart's wounds and terrors, or else you will close and protect yourself, striking back at the source of openness you most yearn to become. Your gifts of attention and energy, of presence and radiance, are always flowing from you to those who are more clenched than you are in the moment. And you are constantly inspired and gifted by those who are more open than you in the moment. The gifts must be given. Circulation is the law. If you try to hold back, you suffer. You must freely give your deepest gifts without holding back. And you must also freely receive from the source upstream. Suffering is only your refusal to open. You are alive as gifting.